I'm going to make a video here just walking through some analysis uh, in Excel using pivot tables um, to, to illustrate some of the techniques of pivot tables or at least one in particular. Let's start by getting some data. I'm going to get some data from data.police.uk. I'm going to go to the data tab in data.police.uk and I'm going to download the date latest data for one particular force. I'm going to pick West Midlands Police. I'm also going to specify that I want stop and search data rather than crime data. And I just need to click that button to generate the data and then download them. Now once I've done that, I can switch to Excel and I can go and open that data that I've just um, opened. Actually, first of all, I'm going to need to unzip it. So let's do that first. So now I've unzipped it. There it is. So I'm going to open that up. Let's just reshape my screen a little bit as well so you can see the full spreadsheet. Um, whenever you first look at a spreadsheet, it, it's always worth having a look at the different columns, thinking about different ideas for stories, uh, anything that you don't understand. There may well be columns that you, you're not entirely sure about and you might need to do some further research. It's worth emphasizing that a, a spreadsheet can't talk to you, it can't explain everything about itself. So if something doesn't make sense, you, you will need to put it to one side and, and go and do some extra research. Phone calls as well, often there is information surrounding a spreadsheet that will include a phone number of someone you can talk to about the data. So don't be afraid to speak to people about the data as well. Always look on the website and, and look for information about the data that you're downloading. On the data downloads side, it says what information is provided. It says see the about page for a description of each column in the CSV file. So it's really important you read this and click on the link and then you can see some information about the provenance of the data, about how data is extracted, um, outcomes, anonymization. So there's some really important context here about the quality of the data as well, the accuracy of locations, stop and search in particular. This always important context for you to understand the data that you're working with. But here is the data and what we um, are interested in is this column here about the outcome of the search. How many searches, how many times when a police officer stops someone and searches them, how many times is there an outcome that suggests that they were right to actually stop and search the person? Well, we can find out by doing a pivot table. A pivot table will give us an aggregate view, an overview of the data based on a particular category, a particular column. And in this case, we want an overview based on outcome. So this suits a pivot table very well. To do a pivot table, we need to go to the insert menu and pivot table is the very first button in that menu. Before you click that button, it's important to make sure that you are on just one cell and that you are on just one cell within your data. This is because where you are in the data will have a, an influence on what Excel guesses is the area containing your data. So you shouldn't have more than one selected, otherwise it will think that you're selecting the table that you want it to pivot um, and you should be inside your data. So I'm just going to make sure I'm on one of the cells and I'm going to click on pivot table. It will tell you the range of cells that it's going to use. So um, we can see that it's going from A1 to O 2197. And just check if that fits with what we are expecting. 
and then click OK to create this pivot table in a new sheet. So once you click OK, it will create that new sheet. We can see we've got our original data here and we've got the pivot table here. At this point, before we go any further, it's important to save a copy of our data because at the moment our data is in CSV format. We downloaded the data and it was downloaded in CSV format. CSV format is a, a very useful format, but it also can only hold one sheet of data. In order to keep two sheets of data, we're going to need to save it as an Excel workbook, a spreadsheet. And that's what this warning here is drawing our attention to. It's saying some features might be lost if we save it in CSV format. And it's recommending that we save it in an Excel file format. So let's do that. We can click the Save As button here or just go to File, Save As. And what we want to do is change the file format option here from CSV, which is the type of file it is at the moment. We want to change it to Excel Workbook. We can also change the name if we want. So we might add Analysis. So we know that this is the analysis rather than the raw data. And then making sure that we've saved it as an Excel workbook, click Save. And now that warning's disappeared. So let's now look at the pivot table that we've created. This is an empty pivot table. You can see the empty pivot table on the left. And on the right, you can see what you use to build the pivot table. So it actually says on the left, to build a report, choose fields from the pivot table field list. And this over here is the pivot table field list. A field is just a column. So we can see each of these columns listed here. To build this pivot table, we need to drag these fields from the list at the top to these boxes underneath. In particular, we want to drag them to the rows box and the values box. Those are the two most important. The other two we might not use. The rows should contain what we want to focus on in our data, what we want to aggregate on. And in our case, we want to focus on the outcome of each stop and search. So if I scroll down these column names until I get to outcome. I can bring it into this area here in a couple of ways. I can click and drag it. So to click and drag it, I would click up here and hold the mouse button down and then drag with the mouse button still pressed down and then let go once it's where I want it. That's one way to do this. Another way if I click and drag it back, so I'm going to remove it now. Another way is to tick the box next to it. Now, if I tick the box next to outcome, it's going to appear, but not in the box I want it. It's going to appear in values. So I'm still going to need to drag it, click and drag it from that box into the one that I want it in. Now you'll notice when it's put in rows, it gives me each value that's in this column. When it's in values, it will just count how many entries there are in the outcome column. So values is used to perform some sort of calculation, like counting something or adding something up or working out an average. Rows is used to give you a breakdown of all the different uh, categories or the different unique values in this in this column. So by putting outcome into rows, it's telling me how many different uh, types of outcome there are, what those outcomes are. Now in values, I'm going to want to count something. Um, I'm going to want to count how many entries there are against each of these categories of outcome. 
Now one way I could do this is by dragging outcome down again. If I drag outcome down again, it will tell me that there are 1,449 rows with this category where there is something in the outcome column, some text. There are 308 in the arrest category where there are something, there's some entry in the outcome column. One thing to notice here is that the, it tells us that there's none at all in blank and this is because it can't count blank entries. What we're going to have to do instead is drag something else where there is something in that column. So we could use type because type is always full. And we'll see this time that it does actually count entries. So we've got an answer to our question. How many times um, was there a particular outcome following a stop and search? That's answered here in column B. What column C does is it also tells us how many times was no outcome at all recorded. And if we go back to the data, I'll show you the distinction between the two. So we're interested in um, blank entries. Now, first of all, I should mention we've already got our first story. Our first story is answered here. What's the most common outcome? How often are there different outcomes? What's happened here is that we found out that some don't have any outcome at all. And to look further into that, we might go into our data and filter it based on the blank outcomes, the outcomes with nothing in them. So let's do that last. I'm going to go into the data tab and I'm going to apply a filter. That adds a drop down menu to the top of each column and it means that on the outcome column I can click on that drop down menu and see all the different categories in that column. I can deselect everything and then just look at the blanks. Now you can see there's nothing in, let's just drag this across, there's nothing in this column here. Um, and that's why it can't count anything in our pivot table for, the, for blanks. What we've had to do instead is count these. And this is what it's counting 200 of, where the outcome is blank. But we could also select this data and copy it and paste it into another sheet. And we could do some further analysis on this. Um, we could we could do a story specifically about stops and searches where no outcome is given. What's the object of the search in those particular searches and so on. But remember this is still a second story and actually we don't need to go that far. We can just go back to our pivot table. We can say we're not interested in digging any deeper. We just want to focus on outcomes where one is given.